Hey, welcome back and thanks for watching. Uh, I'm gonna go, I'm off work today. <laughs> so the fire's burned down, I'm gonna get that cranked back up here shortly. Uh, but I'm gonna go over cold start, tractor cold start with you today. Talk a little bit about glow plugs and the duration. Uh, I've done previous videos on that. And then all this is really in the name of sort of knowing this before you get out there. Cause once you're out there and you run the tractor, you shut it off, it's freezing outside, there's snow everywhere and it won't restart. You might not really know what elements really need to be checked uh, in order to figure out how to get it restarted if you don't know what those those switches that prohibit starting uh, are in good conditions. Uh, so you got to kind of know you know the baseline uh, first. So then I'm going to also uh, wrap up here with some of the video uh, clips that I've done over the past couple of weeks with my DC clamp on current meter and show you the current requirements uh, of go glow the fuel pump the glow plugs and uh, the starter uh, in this cold weather. And you'll uh, kind of, I think, get a better feel for why good uh, cranking uh, capability of the tractor is very important in cold weather. All right, so first up, I'm gonna switch over here and do kind of the tractor checkout video. Okay, so there's all this talk online. Everyone's posting, oh, my tractor won't start. And then they post a picture of their tractor covered in snow and they're wondering what's going on. And it's all kinds of crazy. Crazy talk, but let's just talk about these safety, safety switches. That seat switch is the first one. And all that does is kill the engine if you get off while it's either in gear or while the PTO clutch is engaged. That's it. That switch does nothing related to whether or not uh, the tractor will or will not start. The brake, people keep saying you have to have the brake pressed in for it to start. Wrong. That brake does absolutely nothing. That brake's drawn now. I will be releasing it and starting it momentarily without that brake uh, drawn. So I'll show that. Uh, and then uh, there are two other switches. You can actually basically see them from here. So this is the neutral start switch. And you can see the lever down in there. And, uh, you know, if that gets caked up with snow, I guess you can have some problems there. You know, the physical lever will be in neutral, but maybe uh, the tractor doesn't think it's in neutral. And then you have the PTO clutch. Uh, there's a micro switch down in there, which uh, eh, I don't know. You can maybe sort of see. Let's get under the tire, though. So here I am under the tire. That's the switch, and I'll put an arrow on the screen. That thing gets frozen down. Your tractor's not going to start. And, you know, you might be up here fiddling with these levers and saying you're in the right positions, but that doesn't mean the switch is in the right position, and that thing could get frozen in the down position even if you've, you're not even using the PTO. Uh, it could just be ice getting jammed up in there, you know, melt, freeze, melt, freeze, could push that switch down. Uh, so they're, they're the three things. And then the other one is fuel. So normally before I even try to start it, I look down in there and see if it, you know, looks cloudy. And it, it doesn't, so that looks pretty good. And then I'll do uh, check out the fuel filter. So I'll get in here and just kind of take a look and see if that looks cloudy, uh, which it doesn't. So my fuel is not clouded or completely gelled. All right, so that's my general procedure, you know, sort of like for checking out the tractor. Uh, let me switch here real quick and just show you that also that the brake isn't required uh, in order for the tractor to start. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go into Rabbit, and now I'm going to try to start it. Nothing. Starter will not engage. So that prohibits starting. Put that in gear. That also prohibits starting. So right now we've established that neutral and PTO clutch uh, keep it from starting. All right, so now we're back in neutral. The clutch is disengaged. The brake is disengaged. We're at mid throttle. We're gonna start it up. Position one, clicking, normal. Fuel pump building pressure. We've already looked at the fuel and determined that there's no uh, clouding or gelling. And we're going to go to position two, the glow plugs. Now, what I've done, I've been like experimenting with sort of pulsing the glow plugs. Uh, glow plugs. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm doing here, you know, versus just doing one, one hit. Keep in mind though, those glow plugs are also engaged when the starter's engaged. Uh, so, okay, so now we're gonna start it up. Fuel pump. 
blood pumps again. And remember, brakes off. All right, and then here's another video. Man, I can't, I'm gonna have to start it again. Someone said, the admin on the page said, you have to have the seat switch down in order for it to start. So I've taken, you know, unlooped my zip tie, right? So it's up. So, and the brake's still not drawn, right? Uh, so I'm gonna go around to the other side and start it up. Uh, so I'm, like, I'm gonna keep the seat up just so there's no question about whether that paddle is up or down. It is up. So we'll, we'll go mid throttle. It's a warm start, so it should start right up basically, but uh, we'll give it a little pulse of glow plug. So, I mean, that, uh, I don't know what to say. I guess some people just don't know their tractors or, I don't know. Okay, and I've verified that with uh, online with a post and numerous people replied all the way back to the GC2300 series saying that, uh, you know, that's how it operates. Okay, so then I'm going to uh, now switch over and just show you these clips of the current draw with the DC clamp meter. But I want to talk about glow plugs. Uh, a lot of people will run these glow plugs for like 20 and 30 seconds. Uh, so that seems to be too long. I mean, I guess here's the thing. If it works for you, I'm not trying to, you know, convince anyone of anything. Uh, but the consensus seems to be that that's too long. So I'll show you a clip here from Messix where they talk about uh, the tractors that have the manual hold uh, glow plug position. Now, there are some systems out there that if you hold the key on, the glow plugs will stay on as long as you hold that key in that position. Those are the ones that don't last very long. The glow plugs will go bad. They'll, they'll actually lose the resistance and they will not get hot. Uh, I've seen some to the point where they've been so hot, the ends have been mushroomed. Uh, then you have a problem getting them out. So it's an old clip, but you kind of see, you know, his perspective is people who can, you know, hold it, the glow plugs on as long as they want. The tendency is to hold them on too long and you can burn them out. Uh, so you certainly don't uh, want to do that. So what do I do? I, I normally just do maybe 10 seconds on the glow plugs. Uh, I've been experimenting this winter with kind of like 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off, 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off, and then doing the start. I haven't really noticed a great difference. If anything, all it's doing is drawing down the cranking amps on my battery and making the starter start more slowly because I don't have enough juice in my battery to get, uh, get it started uh, smoothly. So I know every tractor is going to be different. Climate is going to be different. Temperature is going to be different. So, hey, you know, you do what works for you. Um, but I guess just know, you know, you hold those glow plugs on too long. And like the guy said in the video, you know, you heat those things up, you can burn them out. You can actually get them so hot that they'll sort of mushroom on the end. Uh, and of course, you don't want to uh, be dealing with that. So if you're like me and then sometimes you forget to actually uh, put the battery tender on, but you want to get out there and get on the tractor, this is your answer, something like a Gulu, you know, jump pack. Uh, so you just put this on your battery and that'll give your starter quite a bit of uh, starting power. I mean, basically what happens is you hit that key and instead of rah, 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 you're rah, 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 you know, it really goes quick. Uh, so that's really gonna help you um, turn the engine over more quickly. Uh, and keep in mind, you know, some people will say, oh, my tractor won't start. Uh, that statement needs a little more de definition uh, as we, you know, kind of went over earlier, you know, whether it's the safety switches or whether it cranks, but then you kill the battery and it stops cranking, for example, that might happen too. That's where the Gulu would come in uh, and give you that jump pack uh, capability. All right, so now let's switch over to the uh, current videos.
All right, conditions are as follows. It's about 50, probably five degrees out. Truck tractor's been setting for well over a week. I've had no battery tender on it. And so we're gonna start it up. That's fuel pump. This is glow plugs. <laughs> mid throttle too. Throttle is mid. Okay, that was a good side by side showing the uh, cold start versus a uh, restart and warm start. Uh, it's clearly showing that the cold engine had a much higher current draw on the starter to get that thing turned over, uh, which also kind of supports why you want a block heater or a magnetic pan heater, because the more heat you can get in these engines, the less draw you're going to have on the battery and the easier it's going to turn over. It's just that simple. Then in all three of those clips, you saw about 45 amps when the glow plugs were engaged and then it quickly drew down from there uh, over time. Uh, so I guess really, actually initially I thought that was, well, I have a weak battery. All I'm doing is drawing a uh, cranking current from capability from my battery. But I did connect the Gulu uh, jump pack to the battery and repeated those tests. And it was the same uh, operation. The, the current draw uh, just kept coming down over time. So I guess that means a hot glow plug has more resistance than a cold glow plug because V equals IR ohms uh, law. That has to be what's, what's happening. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about here is the battery tender. I'll show you a clip here. So a lot of people use battery tenders and uh, Mike actually over on Grampy's workshop pointed this out. Um, you know, if you keep that thing connected to the battery but not plugged into the wall, what you may be doing is killing your battery because of parasitic draw of the uh, battery tender. So watch out for that. So here I'll show you an inline current measurement uh, of my Harbor Freight uh, battery tender. And you can see that in the uh, mode where it's uh, not connected to uh, AC you know, outlet, uh, there's about 0.8 amps, I think is what it was, of draw on that battery. So don't, you know, you need to disconnect it from your battery. So if you think you, you know, well, I plugged the tender in for an hour and it still wouldn't start, you got to stop for a second and say, well, but was the tender connected to my battery prior to that? Do I just leave it plugged in uh, and I'm getting a parasitic draw and actually killing my battery way more than I'm replenishing it uh, with the uh, tender uh, attached? All right, well, that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you hanging in there and watching. I hope I've provided at least some useful startup information. Uh, this time of year, the, the questions online are just cluttered uh, with basically the same thing over and over again. Tractor won't start. Uh, and there's a very uh, straightforward <laughs> set of reasons that uh, would lead to it not starting. There maybe are some more complicated uh, reasons. Uh, but uh, what I guess I'm trying to encourage here is, you know, check the box on those easier ones before you start digging in and doing a bunch of crazy stuff like changing fuel filters and testing cables and um, you know, tearing stuff apart. Uh, check the basics first. Uh, so as always, I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you on the next one.